All right, good day. We are on lesson six of coordinate plane. I actually love the coordinate plane. This is way better than ordering fractions. All right, coordinate plane. We want to look at our real world link. Our objectives today is that we can plot points on a coordinate plane. And you'll know what that is in a minute. It's another big word for something that's not so complicated. All right, so it gives us this map. And it tells us that the layout of the small town it gives us all this stuff. And it's got down here the compass, north, south, east, west. Never eat soggy waffles, in case you remember that. That's how we always remembered it. Um, it shows the small town locations of buildings are described in respect to the small town. Each unit on the grid represents one block. So it wants us to describe the location of the barbershop in relation to town hall. So here's town hall, and here's the barbershop. And each square represents a block. So we go one block, two blocks, three blocks, four blocks, five blocks. And what direction are we going? Look at, if you look at your compass down here, compass says that we're going east. So in relation to the town hall, the barbershop is five blocks east. Of town hall. Okay, what building is located seven blocks east and five blocks north of Town Hall? Okay, so again, each, each square represents one block. They want us to go seven east, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then five blocks north. What direction is, what direction is north? Straight up, so one, two, three, four, five. So what is seven blocks east and five blocks north of town hall, that would be the firehouse. All right. Violetta is at the library. Describe how many blocks and in what direction she would travel to get to the supermarket. So where are you library? Okay, library's here. Okay, and we gotta get to here. So we gotta go one, two, three blocks east, right? And then one, two, three blocks south. So we would write three blocks east and what do we say, three blocks south? Yep, and three blocks south. All right, town hall and the bank are located on the same vertical number line. Where are you, Town Hall and Bank? Oh, I see it, okay. So they're saying this vertical number line, the y-axis, and it's called the y-axis, it's labeled right here. The Town Hall and the Bank are on the same axis. The number zero represents the location of Town Hall, right here is zero. What number represents the location of the bank? So let's go up, one, two, three, four. So all you have to do is count up how many spots. So number four would represent where the bank is at in representation of zero. All right, if you need a second, go ahead and pause. I'm gonna erase this in five, four, three, two, one. All right. All right, mathematical practices, what do we use today? Um, we modeled with mathematics because we used that whole um, coordinate graph. Um, we made use of structure and used repeated reasoning because we kept repeating over and over again that each square was a block and um, things like that. So I think those would be our three for today. All right, so this is a coordinate plane. All it is is a square that's split into quarters, and some fool did not name them right because you would think this would be one, two, three, four quadrants, but they're not. It starts all the way to the right, and it goes counterclockwise. So you got quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and then quadrant four. So it goes counterclockwise, okay? Quadrant one is positive and positive, so two positive numbers make quadrant one. Quadrant two is you gotta go negative and then positive. So a negative and a positive gets to quadrant two. 
quadrant three is a negative and then a negative again. Because see, your zero is right, zero is right here. So everything above and to the right is positive. Everything to the left and below is negative. So then to get to quadrant four, it's a positive and then a negative. So you can graph anything knowing where those four quadrants are at and what they represent. And they won't ever give you one without the numbers on there. So you just need to understand, go right or left first, and then up or down, okay? But you do need to try and remember quadrant one, two, three, four. Just remember it starts all the way to the right and goes counterclockwise. Now it's gonna ask us, identify an ordered pair that comes with point C. So point C, is over here. And remember, we have to go on, we have to start on the x-axis first. That's the one that goes horizontally, okay? Horizontally like horizon. And we're gonna move right on the x-axis. So we're gonna go one, two, let's see, right here is one and a half. And then go up to get there and we go up half one. So you can just look across. You can look here, bring that up, look here, and there's your two coordinates. So your coordinates would be one and a half comma one. And it's gotta be in those brackets. So bracket, one, one and a half comma one. That is your coordinates. Okay, you write them just like that. So always start left to right, then go up and down. And you always name left to right first, and then up or down. Okay, and we're gonna practice this plenty more. All right. Now, with regards to reflections on the coordinate plane, and you're gonna be doing this a lot in eighth grade, reflections and rotations and stuff like that. If you have a number that's at negative four and zero, if you wanna reflect, you gotta act like you just completely flip it over and it ends up as positive four, zero. So remember, we were talking about um, opposites the other day in like lesson two, I think it was. The opposite of a negative is a positive, and the opposite of zero, there is no opposite, so that would stay the same. So if you're trying to reflect, do the opposite of what is there. If it's a negative four, it's a positive four. If it's zero, it's gotta stay zero because there's no opposite of zero, all right? So, Name an order pair that has a reflection of negative 3 and 2. So negative 3 over negative 3 and up 2. So we want a reflection of this. So think the opposites. What's the opposite of negative 3? Now, you could reflect this two different ways. They reflected it doing the opposite of the second. Oh, I get it. Because it says across. Now you got to watch this. It says across the x-axis, and the x-axis is this one, okay? So if we want to reflect it, we know it's got to end up down here, okay? So the negative three's got to stay because we need that on this side. But the positive two becomes a negative two. So you're not going to exchange both of them, just one of them, depending on what axis you're flipping, okay? So the opposite, so we don't do the opposite of negative three because we want it down in this quadrant. We want to flip it over this line. So negative three stays so we can get it down here, but positive two becomes negative two. Okay, let's move up. Name an ordered pair that is a reflection of each point across the x-axis. Okay, I'm gonna use this as reference. So x-axis again is this, which means the first number stays the same, the second number changes. So we've got one negative four. So if I went, up, if I went to one, down to negative four is right here. So we want to flip that and put it up here. So we still want to stay with one, but instead, the negative four becomes what? Right, positive four. So one, positive four. And then you see it's a complete flip. It just flips right over the line to the other one. Negative two, five. Negative two and up to five, which is up here. So again, if we're gonna flip over this line, the negative two stays, but the positive five becomes a what? Right, negative five, which will land it right there. Okay? 
I'm going to erase this so we don't get confused here. Negative 3, negative 3, positive 1. Okay, again, if we want to land down here, the negative 3 has to stay. Oh, that was negative 1. My bad. My bad. Negative 3, negative 1. I'm sorry. My fault. If we want it to flip, we're going to do negative 3, positive 1. Okay? So if you're flipping over the x-axis, you keep the first one and change the sign of the second one. If you're flipping over the y-axis, you're going to switch the first one and keep the second one. Okay? And we'll practice this plenty. I know it's confusing right now. I hope that you have your notebooks out and you're taking notes on this so that you can remember this for the future. All right. Let's see what we got coming up here. All right. Um, I am going to go right into the guy to practice because I'm worried I won't have time to finish it if I don't. Okay. Identify the pair that names each point or name each point and identify the quadrant that it's located. So we have T. And if we go over here, T is right here. So to get there, pull my hand out of the way, we got to go over negative one and a half and down negative two. So negative one and a half, negative, negative one and a half, comma, negative two. And what, we're, what quadrant is that in? Remember, this is going to be one, two, three, Four. So that lands in quadrant three. All right, negative one and a half and zero. So negative one and a half, find that, and zero means it doesn't go up or down, and we have letter K. And what quadrant is that in? Actually, that's not in a specific quadrant. We don't even need the quadrant because it's not in two or three. It's right on the, on the axis. So there won't be a quadrant for that one. Negative two, two and a half over negative two up to two and a half, that is letter B. What quadrant is letter B in? Quadrant two. All right, what is located at the reflection of negative three, negative four across the Y axis? Here's your Y axis, okay? So negative three, negative four. Oh, I didn't see this, I'm sorry. Negative three, negative 4 would be here and if we want to flip it over this axis then we're going to then we're going to take the negative 3 and we're going to make it a positive 3 and negative 4 because we want to flip it this way so we got to go positive 3 negative 4 and what is there the gym what is located at the reflection of the science labs across the x-axis so now i'm going to go this way and the science lab is right here right here and that looks like it's at negative three negative two negative three negative two so if we want to go across this axis we got to keep the negative three but we got to change it to positive two so negative three, positive two, and what is there? The art studio. All right, I know that this can be pretty complicated, so if you're confused, don't stress out, all right? I will help you through it, um, or see an adult. The reflections are difficult, okay? So do the best you can, try the independent practice. If you struggle, come and see me and let me know. I hope you have a great day.